Our next guest was on the scene of yesterday's bridge collapse in Baltimore, where he thanked first responders for risking their lives. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg excuse me, is here, you, and we're sir. glad to have you. Thank you so much. And I think all of us, and in the commercial break, we were talking about how tragic it is for the families who are awaiting word about their loved ones who were working on that bridge who are presumed dead. So we think about them. We also are thinking about all the other people affected in Baltimore who can't get to work today, and it's going to be some time before they can, and the supply chain issues here. We can put it up on the screen for people. The Port of Baltimore is very busy. These are 2023 stats. Uh, you know, the, there are a, a lot of cruises come out of there with uh, about 450,000 people, uh, 140,000 jobs connected to the port. Sir, what are your plans at this time? I know it's only been 24 hours. But to reroute that and to try to get the economy stabilized after a tragic accident like this. Well, uh, first, as you noted, our, our thoughts are with all of the families that were impacted, uh, six families whose worlds have been completely changed and, and shaken overnight by what happened. And our thanks are with the first responders who have done just incredible work. Uh, I had a chance to meet many of them yesterday, including divers, as they came out of that cold water with limited visibility trying to save lives. There's no question in my mind that lives were saved by the quick response. As you said, we also have to prepare for the supply chain implications of this. The bridge itself carried about 30,000 vehicles a day. There are tunnels that work as alternatives, but there's going to be some impacts on traffic. The other major concern right now is the port. One thing that's under, important to understand is uh, uh, the way that the flow of cargo ships is handled is very different from something like air traffic control, where if, uh, say, a runway goes out or there's a problem at an airport and planes have to divert, there is a single authority telling those planes what to do and where to go. It doesn't work that way with ocean shipping. You've got different shippers, different ports, different terminals, uh, different cargo owners. They're under no requirement to talk to each other. But we've been using the relationships and some of the tools we have at the Department of Transportation to make sure that coordination does happen. We're talking about the biggest vehicle handling port in the United States. Uh, Baltimore handles not just uh, a lot of vehicle imports and exports in terms of cars, also a lot of farm equipment. You, you see at the moment you get close uh, to that port. And that's a very important part of our economy because those are some of our uh, best exports. So a lot of work in the next days and weeks. Of course, the ultimate goal is to clear that channel, get that port back up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, but that's not going to happen overnight. So we've got to deal with the implications. And, and you're going to have to move fast. I know that too. Wall Street Journal reports that contaminated fuel might have been a part of that ship. I mean, it seems like the ship just died in the water there. Uh, the head of the NTSB said on CNN this morning that uh, they're going to look and see whether or not dirty fuel paid, uh, played a role in this. Um, is that where you're leaning right now? I can't speak to that just because the NTSB is independent in their investigation. What I will say is they were on the scene right away. I saw uh, the chair, Jennifer Homedy, there uh, yesterday, uh, as well as Coast Guard. So you got law enforcement, NTSB. Uh, I know that they are going to look at every piece of evidence, uh, every piece of information that's needed on the investigative side. Meanwhile, here at the Department of Transportation, our focus is how do we get that bridge back up and deal with the consequences mm -hmm. uh, of it yeah. being down if, in the meantime? If you find, how do we get that port yeah, back up and running? Right on. Deal with it, it, supply chain consequences. If in the you meantime. find that this was like somebody on the port or somebody on the ship wasn't doing their job, um, I, I would imagine they would bear the responsibility for it. But the president said yesterday the federal government will pay for the entire cost of rebuilding. But if you if you find that somebody involved here was responsible, why, why not have them pay? Yeah, there's no question that if the investigation determines that any private party or parties are responsible, they will be held accountable. Uh, but uh, th that can't be something that we're just waiting around for. We've got to make sure that we work now, today, to get this bridge back up and to get this port back open. That bridge took five years to build. We don't yet have an e estimate on how long it'll take to rebuild. So the president made it very clear that every tool that the federal government needs to be available to Governor Wes Moore as a state of Maryland. Maryland uh, leads the work on both the bridge and the port. We've got to make sure that funding is not an obstacle, and we've got to make sure that we tear down any administrative barriers, too. And that's going to require a lot of work. We're going to do everything we can as a department that does not require an act of Congress. Uh, but we're also going to engage Congress because we uh, will likely need their help to make sure some of the funding is in place.
And that will probably, I was reading today that that is going to happen right away as soon as the Congress gets back. Maybe even beforehand they'll have that ready to go. I want to ask you about air travel. You mentioned air travel and how obviously shipping is different from air travel. A lot of passengers, travelers have been rattled by all the stories coming out of planes, especially with Boeing. And then this week we find out that the CEO of Boeing has decided he's out. He says, the eyes of the world are on us, and I know we will come through this moment a better company, building on all the learnings we accumulated as we worked together to rebuild Boeing over the last number of years. Did you welcome the news that Boeing's CEO will be stepping down? Well, we had a lot of concerns about what's going on inside Boeing. Uh, the FAA administrator talked about uh, concerns uh, that arose when he visited their manufacturing facility, uh, not just day-to-day uh, -day operations, but really a question about culture. Are they prioritizing safety? And what we saw was a lot of focus on production. Of course, production is important, but the most important thing is safety. So, uh, you know, what I'll say is uh, whoever is going to lead Boeing going forward needs to lead Boeing in a direction where culturally and operationally they are a thousand percent on top of all quality and safety issues. And FAA has taken an extraordinary step of restricting how many aircraft they can produce uh, isn't going to allow them to produce any uh, any higher numbers of aircraft uh, until and unless they can demonstrate that that they can do it safely. Look, just, just to follow uh, up it on that, taken, yeah. uh, just to yeah. follow up on that, just mm -hmm. to get to Dana's point here, is it a good move that the head of Boeing is stepping down at the end of this year? Yes or no? Look, I'm not taking a position on a, a leadership choice inside of a company. What I will say is any leader at that company needs to lead it in a direction towards safety. Uh, I talked directly to uh, the CEO uh, about my concerns and our concerns on safety, and uh, our message to the leadership and to the board of Boeing is to make sure that nothing comes higher than safety in their priorities. Do you think it's safe for everyone to fly right now? Look, every time I get on an airplane, which is every few days, I know that I'm participating in the safest mode of travel in the world and that that is only kept safe by the continuous, intense, rigorous attention of so many professionals, of safety regulators and the FAA. And the FAA will not allow anything to happen uh, that is not determined to be safe, which is part of why we have Boeing under such a microscope right now. Sir, thank you for your time. Thank um, you.